Hi guys and welcome back. We're going to start off by frying out some onions. I've really, really finely chopped them. Because they're going into our pierogi and we want them to be nice and small, okay? So even if there's someone who doesn't eat onions, they'll hardly feel them. So we're going to let them uh, saute a bit. We're going to, of course, put garlic, the great basis to every recipe, our delicious on uh, onion and garlic. Okay, let that fry up a bit. Don't let it brown too much. I'm going to put that to the side and we're going to add in our delicious mince meat. All the measurements as usual will be in the description box. This is about 600 grams of minced meat, beef, salt and pepper. I've seasoned it. Okay, we're going to add more crazy seasonings later. And then we're just going to mix everything together. Our onions, our garlic, our meat. Let them all introduce themselves to each other and let that meat cook till it's brown. I'm adding in about a tablespoon of flour, more seasoning, salt, pepper, and some special South African seasoning. Go crazy with whatever seasoning you want. The flour is gonna help dry out our meat mixture because we don't want it to be too moist when it goes inside the pastry. So our flour and all of your seasonings, anything you like, give that a good mix. And our mixture is gonna be nice and dry, but not too dry, <laughs> just dry enough to go in the pastry. Taste, season again to your liking, and our meat is ready to go. Next, we're gonna start with our pastry, okay? I'm gonna put in some oil, an egg, a bit of salt, and a little bit of water. We're gonna give that a good mix. And then we're going to slowly start incorporating our flour, all-purpose flour. Now I'm going to gradually add one cup of flour at a time until we get to our desired consistency of the dough. You need to be careful because you don't want to add too much flour. You don't want the dough to be too dry. You also don't want it to be too sticky. So, you know, just go with your gut. As I say, go gradually uh, until you get that desired consistency. You're going to get to a point where you want to put it, you know, outside the bowl and work with it on your, your hands. Your hands are the best kitchen tool that we have. Okay. I'm even keeping it in the bowl. If your bowl's big enough, you can also do that. And you want it to be nice and smooth and elastic. So you'll know when your dough's ready. Very beautiful. Put it back in an oiled bowl and we're going to cover it and leave it to rest for about 30 minutes. This is for the gluten to relax and to absorb all of the moisture. Half an hour later, we're ready to go. I'm flouring my surface and my rolling pin, and we're going to roll out our dough. Now, uh, I don't want my pastry dough to be too thick in comparison to the meat. I want the meat to be the star of the show. So I'm going to roll it out pretty thin. If you prefer a thicker pastry, then feel free to not roll it out as much for a thicker dough, uh, whatever you like. I prefer a thin pastry. Now I'm going to take a small bowl to cut out the circular shapes. These pierogan are going to be nice and big. If you want smaller pierogan, simply use a cup, a glass, and uh, you'll get smaller circles. We like these big ones, and I'm going to take them all out. Of course, reuse the rest of the dough for more, and gently stretch out each one. We're finally ready to go in with our mincemeat filling. I'm going to use water as glue. Okay, the glue is going to keep it all together, the water. And I'm going to press it down again with a fork. Cute pattern and keeps the dough together. And voila, there you've got your pierogum. Now, very important, don't overfill them. Then it's going to be very hard to seal. Okay, again, we're using that water to act as a glue for our dough. Carefully pinch all the sides over and I'm using my fork again for that pretty pattern and to keep everything sealed Beautiful put it on a baking tray so it's ready to go And you know if you mess up you can always start again it takes some practice sometimes don't worry too much We have everything now ready we're going to go in the oven with some egg wash so it browns for about 180 degrees for about half an hour 20 minutes and you can see it's browned up. I could have left it in longer. I didn't want it too brown. Guys, this is delicious in chicken soup. Check out the chicken soup video or by, it, well, by itself in a dipping sauce. Just so, so good. Give it a try and enjoy.